Kim here from Xano Support, and today we're going to go ahead and explore a rate limiting password feature. That is, if a user enters their password incorrectly five times, we'll set them in a timeout. So we'll go over our login endpoint logic, pre middleware, triggers, as well as tasks. Let's go ahead and hop into it. Getting started, we're going to be looking at our data tables. So you can see I've added a login attempts table. This is uh, more or less a logging table that's just going to measure who is logging in and whether or not they were successful. And then a user table where I have two columns that I've added, a temp suspension and a temp timeout end. The suspension is a bool, so uh, just a true or false, checking if that user is suspended. And the timestamp here is going to be when that suspension ends. Heading to our API default group where my auth login endpoint lives, what we want to do is we want to adjust this a little bit. I want to adjust this by clicking on this blue plus sign next to validate password. And I'm going to be clicking on my conditional if then statement where the argument that I'm going to be checking is if that pass result equals true. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because if it's true, I want to return a token. And if it's not, I want to throw an error. Now, of course, with this precondition, the way that it works is if it's triggered, then no logic runs after it. So we don't want to stop with the propagation of logic or anything of that sort. So let's go ahead and ask ourselves when this password result is true. So successfully uh, matches the password with the hashed password. We want to create this token. Otherwise, we do want to throw that error. So we're going to start off by just rearranging the logic here just like that. From there, what I want to do is I want to add a log event. So I will. I'll go to my database requests. I'll go to my add record, and I'm going to be adding a login attempt. I'll drag this up above. I'm just going to have it up above my action here. And it's asking me my user ID and my success. So if this user exists, we can grab the user information from the top. That would be our user dot ID and the success. We can actually hard code this to be true because it will be by all accounts, a successful login attempt. And what we can then do is we can clone this. We can go ahead and then add this into our else statement. So what we're checking again is if this user exists, we're searching this user by that email. And if the email exists, then what we'll do uh, is, of course, check its password. Now it's checking if this password is correct. If it's not correct, we still have who the user is. And then we also have the fact that, well, we know it's not going to go through successfully. So we can change that success to false. And that's all we have to do for our login endpoint. So let's go ahead and click this run and debug. And we'll enter in the information of the user that exists inside our account. And we'll Passing that password, let's just make sure it works. We do get our auth token. And if my password is wrong, then I get an invalid credentials. The next part of this is we want to go ahead and create a trigger for our user. That is, if we have so many login attempts that have failed, we want to then adjust the user record. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just clone that add record. We're going to be getting the user here from this user, presuming that we don't trigger this precondition, of course. And then we can hard code that this was a failed attempt. So we'll go ahead and click save. And now we can go ahead and test this. I'll go ahead and pass in my email of the user that exists in my data table, as well as their password. And the token does generate successfully. If I pass in the wrong password, we do throw that error. So cool. The next thing that we need to do is really just check if that data was created. So let's go to our database and our login attempts. And you can see that one attempt was successful and the other wasn't. What we want to do from here is say, well, if we have five records that are unsuccessful within the last 30 seconds or a minute or whichever time frame you choose, then we'll adjust the user record. In the top right, we're going to go ahead and click on these three dots, then head to triggers where we'll add a database trigger and we'll name it rate limit password attempts. We're going to set the action to insert. So anytime this record is inserted and then we'll go ahead and click save. From here, what we need to do is we need to add a query all records. So we'll find that query all records and we want to count how many attempts a user has made. So we'll go ahead and say that our login attempt dot user ID needs to equal our new dot user underscore ID. And what we need to do is we actually need to measure if it's existed within a particular time window. So what we're going to say is that that login attempt dot created at is greater than now. We're also going to say we're going to add some seconds here. So let's go ahead and timestamp add seconds. You can add minutes as well or anything of that sort. And we actually want to say negative 60, so a minute ago. That's saying that we attempted to log in essentially a minute ago. 
Um, and then we're going to add another. So our login attempt dot created that is going to be less than now. So it's within this window of a minute ago and now. And we want to go ahead and click save and click save. So we're going to go ahead and capture our login attempts. Let's go to our output, head to the blue pencil next to the return and select count. And then I like to just adjust that. So login underscore attempt. From there, we actually need to get the user that we're dealing with. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and click on that blue plus sign, database requests, get record, and our user, where we'll get them through our new dot user ID. Then what we'll do is we will have a conditional because now we need to check. Okay, well, does the user count attempts match or do the attempts made? Are they greater than five? Or honestly, it's an arbitrary number, but we're going to be checking. Does the login underscore attempt is it greater than or equal to five? Again, this is a number that you get to decide, but we're saying, has this person tried to attempt to log in five times with the constraints that we had set? And we also just want to ensure that this user, well, that they aren't already suspended. So user temp suspension equals false. There's no need to uh, run this if they already are suspended. So from there, well, we need to go ahead and edit. So let's find that edit record. We're going to be editing our user. And we're saying that our user is that user1.id. And that the temp suspension is now true. They are suspended. And they'll be suspended for, in another number that you get to decide, but I'm adding a filter here onto my now timestamp. I'm going to say add seconds to time uh, timestamp. I'll say 60. So for a solid minute, they will be blocked out. And I'll click save. I do want to go ahead and adjust my user1. I do like to delete that one there. So it's just going to be a user and I'll update my references. Perfect. From there, we'll go ahead and click publish. I do have a request history turned on. So what we now need to do is see if we attempt to log in, does our user, will they go ahead and be suspended? So if we head to our auth login endpoint and we attempt this one, two, three, four, and five times, and then head back to our database for our user, we can see that now they are suspended. The thing is, if I head back to this endpoint and keep on clicking this, I'm told the same thing over and over again, that there's invalid credentials. And believe it or not, you can go ahead and head back to our login attempts and we can see, yep, there are more login attempts. What we should do is we should create a pre-middleware that checks before it even processes in the function stack, is this user suspended? Because if they're suspended, there's nothing to do. So we'll head to our library, we'll go to our middleware and we'll add a middleware. We'll go ahead and say rate limit password attempts, the response replace exception critical and safe. What we're going to be passed in is some information that is our email and password. So we're going to use that email to find the user. So we'll go ahead and type in get record. That's our user. We're going to be switching this to email and the field value will be our vars dot email because that's the name of the input coming through. Perfect. So we're getting this record and we want to go to output and we want to make sure that we have this information that exists. That's the temp suspension and temp timeout in mainly really just looking for this temp suspension. Um, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pass a precondition. And this precondition is just going to be checking if that user is not suspended. So let's real quick head to this user. I just want to delete that one off. So it's just our user. And then our precondition is going to be checking our user temp suspension equals false. Otherwise, we'll say, you have tried this too many times. Please try again. And we'll say too many requests and click save and click publish. We now need to put this pre middleware on to our endpoint. So I'll head to my login endpoint, head to my settings in the top right, click on middleware, customize and add that pre middleware that we just created. We'll go ahead and click save. And we should be able to run this and we can see that Oops, too many requests. So we've tried this too many times. That precondition is being triggered. It's throwing none of the logic in this function stack is now running because our precondition or our pre middleware and the precondition inside the pre middleware are preventing the actual logic from running. So this is just a security measure to enforce that anybody that's trying to like brute force in your application is prevented from doing so. So we'll go ahead and publish this, but we still have one thing left to do. Under our user table, we have this temp suspension and temp timeout. That is, at a particular time, this person should no longer have to worry. They should be able to log in again, and they shouldn't be prevented from that. 
So the best way to approach this is going to be with a background task. You could use a post process um, or you could use a background task. I greatly prefer the background task with scalability and so that you're not keeping a connection um, open or not even necessarily that, but just using any of those resources. Tasks are made for this. So we'll click on add background task and rate limit password attempts. And we'll go ahead and click save. So in our function stack, we'll go ahead and query all of our records. We'll go ahead and query our users. What we're doing in this is we're querying our users where the temp suspension currently they are suspended. And we're going ahead and also making sure that the timeout is less than now. So that means that their timeout has ended. So we'll click save and click save. Now what we need to do is we need to loop through all of these users. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to get our for each loop here and we're going to loop through our list of users. And we'll go ahead and head real quick back to the output and just change that back to user. In fact, we'll change this to users. Click save, update reference. Back inside my for each loop, I'm going to make sure that my list is users and my as is user. You can keep it as item, not necessary to change it, but for this case, then we'll add a function inside of it. So the function that we're adding inside of it, it is going to be the edit record. We're going to be editing the user that we're currently iterating over. So user ID. And what we want is our temp suspension to be set to false and our temp timeout to be set to null. And we'll go ahead and click save and publish this. Before we actually go ahead and enable this task, we do need to ensure that this starts on a date time in the future, as well as it repeats. And we can set it to every 10 seconds, every 15 seconds, every 20, 30, every minute. In this case, I'm going to stick with every 10 seconds. It is never going to end. We'll go ahead and click save. And from now, we can go ahead and enable this task and publish. Now, after that task has been published, all we need to do is double check here inside our table that it eventually will run. So we're going to wait a minute and check in in just a sec. So after refreshing it, it looks like it went through. Everything is cleared. So now the only next thing we need to do is test this. And I'm going to test this by heading to Postman. And so what we have here is we have our email and our password. We have that endpoint. It's set to post. And we'll go ahead and click set. And when we do, we get that invalid credential. So we'll go ahead and send this more times, one more time. And then we've tried this too many times. Please try again. So we have this timeout here. Let's just double check that if we head to our user, we refresh them. Perfect. We're going to wait one more minute here and just double check that this user can actually log in. But real quick, let's head to our login attempts. We can see the last attempt was at 152. If we click send again, it was record 32. The last one, it was perfect. So we're actually, we're preventing any of the logic from actually running. In your pre-middleware, you can add another login attempt if you'd like, but I don't necessarily want to because I don't want my triggers to be run, even though we have uh, things prevented the measures in place. Ultimately, I just want to make sure that this works. So let's head to our user and we'll wait. And we'll just keep on refreshing this until it works. Then we refresh and perfect, it works. The only way that we'll actually know if it really works is if we can actually then send in the right password here. Perfect, it works. So there you have it. That's how you go ahead and create a rate limiting password system for users who have entered their password too many times, are eating your server resources, you can prevent them from continuing through with your business logic, say, nope, you're done. You got a timeout for a little bit. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comment sections below, or you can reach out to us on the community or the left-hand sidebar of your Xano instance where you can reach out to us in support chat. But thanks so much for tuning in and until next time, have a good one.